Rasheen has come to the West End of London to watch some live theatre. No, not that kind of theatre. This kind of theatre. This cloud-based platform now allows trainee surgeons to scrub in virtually, from home, on the bus, or in this case, on the street. Sometimes it's quite hard to either get the time to get into theatre or it can be quite busy. So being able to watch things kind of in my own time or remotely is really helpful. It also helps give kind of a bit of more one-to-one -one kind of interaction with the consultants so I can speak to them via the Proxmi app. Rasheen is watching a feed coming from an operating room at St Thomas's Hospital in central London, where a patient is undergoing robot-assisted surgery to remove a section of their colon that's been affected by cancer. More than 2,000 surgeries have now been conducted at the hospital using the platform, which has been developed by a company called Proxmi. There are four cameras in this operating room. Two are giving an overview of the entire procedure from different angles. Vicky is wearing the third on her headset and the fourth is on one of the robot arms, which is currently being used to see inside the patient. All four of these streams are recorded and stored in an online library that other surgeons and trainees around the world can access. And even today's surgeon, who is extremely experienced, has found it useful. For us, it's got a couple of uses. One, when I was starting on the robot, it means that we can look back at our own videos and it helps with our own learning and training and seeing what we were doing, how we could have done it better, make us more efficient. Also, if we have any complications that's recorded, we can look back and see, could we have done something different? Could we have been avoided? Or could we have you know, managed it slightly better at the time? And today you're going to have at least one student uh, watching live and she's going to be able to talk to you. Yeah. Um, that, doesn't that get annoying? Doesn't that distract you no. at important moments? No, so, so previously students would be in the room, yeah, and they couldn't really see much. Yeah. Now they're in a separate room, they can watch in comfort, yeah, and when they into our time, just ask. But it, it's not distracting until we used to be asking us questions. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the traditional medical adage is see one, do one, teach one, but I wonder whether it might be evolving into stream one, see one, do one, teach one. And this evolution has come at a vital time for trainees in particular. Obviously, the pandemic affected everyone, but surgical training was quite hard hit. Lots of cases were cancelled, so having somewhere where I could kind of keep up to date, keep in touch, remind myself about things was really helpful. But while it's a useful training tool, the platform's primary aim was to get the best surgeons into as many theatres as possible. Know today that five billion people around the world lack access to safe surgery. That's not localised to a particular part of the world, that's everywhere. But what we also know is even within um, developed countries, there are challenges around accessibility, variability, and the workforce shortages that we have. Our platform is basically ensuring that patients have access to the best care no matter where they are. And so if it's a local hospital or, or, or more of a, a suburban area that doesn't have the expertise on site, historically the patients would have to either travel many, many miles or days to get access to that care or just not have access to it. Now what we're able to do is by using this kind of software, we're able to bring the expert care closer to patients, closer to their clinical teams and where they need it. It's really improving access for patients, but also for clinical teams to upskill and support their local population where they need it. From the UK to the US, from Kenya to Peru, the Proximy platform has now been used in hundreds of hospitals across more than 50 countries. And in the last year alone, it's assisted with over 17,000 surgeries. It's taken a lot to get this technology off the ground, but not all the hurdles were technical ones. What's been your experience as a woman in healthcare and technology? Have you felt it's harder for you than it would have been if you were a man? I think there's no doubt that it's harder for women in these environments. You know, trying to raise money, trying to build a company that's going to fundamentally disrupt surgery. I remember people telling me when I went to, to fundraise early on is, this problem is too big for a female surgeon to sort of fix quite blatantly. And so, you know, I'm glad that we've hopefully been able to prove them wrong so far. How do we fix it? How do we fix it? When we talk to recruiters, we're pretty particular. If you're not going to show us a diverse candidate list, 
from both gender and ethnicity, then we're not going to work with you. And so you really have to start to instill those minimum requirements that you want to make sure that you're making a, a concerted effort to hire within those minority groups. You want to just be a little bit higher up. Back at St. Thomas's Hospital, the operation is nearly over. So this is where we're at with surgery, where a surgeon can pilot a robot, which actually is in the patient. It's properly humbling what's going on here. When you think about it, surgeon over there is piloting a robot over there that is removing someone's cancer.